number 8 then from the 2016 Advanced Tire Mathematics of Mechanics. And here's a wee completely non-mechanical question here. Partial fractions for an awful lot of marks for what it is because it's really one of the easiest ones you can get where you've just got these nice little completely separate linear factors in the denominator. So there's not going to be much problem there. You've got nice little knockout values you can use. One thing you should notice is, but they've split up. They shouldn't have given you split up. What's the point of telling you? You should notice for yourself. X times X times X is just X cubed. The numerator is X cubed. Doesn't matter if it's just X cubed or more than, you know, 2, 3, 4 X cubed. You only use partial fractions to resolve proper rational fractions. If the degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom, then you'd have to divide it out until the degree of the top is less than that. So it shouldn't have said, oh, for three marks, do that. It shouldn't be written in this other form of three plus. Well, well, the first thing you'd have to do, though, is, since I'm going to have to figure out how many of these it'll take to make this, I'll need to multiply that out. So I'll just do that to the side. So I've got x plus one time to multiply this first. That'll be x squared, that'll be minus six, and that'll be plus x, plus three minus two. And then I can multiply it back down here. So I've got 3x cubed plus 8x squared minus 11 all over. Now, multiplying that out, there's only one way of getting the x cubed, and that's the x times the x squared, so that's just x cubed. So the one way of getting the number, that's the 1 times the 6, so I'll have a minus 6. But when it comes to the other pair, the x squared and the x's as a couple. So x squared, I've either I've got x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. And for the x's, I've got minus 6 plus the 1 is minus 5x. Now, doing that multiplication gives you one mark. Now, there's two ways to resolve this. Now, the degree of the top's the same as the degree of the bottom, so you'll need to divide it in. You can either carry out a division, but when it's just a case of it's the same degree, you could just say, well, how many times will I need to take this away from that? So it must be three of these. So that top must be able to be changed into three of them with something else. There's different ways you could say it. I think I'll write it, just write it down that way. So I've got three of these, three of x cubed plus two x squared minus five x minus six over x cubed plus two x squared minus five x minus six. Now I need to just to find out what do I need to correct this back into what it should have been on top. Well, this says I've got 3x cubed. That said I've got 3x cubed. Don't need to mend that. This says I've got 6x squared. That says I've got 8, so I need another plus 2x squared. This says I've got minus 15x. That's got no x's, so I'll have to add those 15x back on. This says I've got minus 18 but it's only meant to be minus 11, so I'll have to add 7 back on. That's just that's one way of doing it without doing a division. Is it any quicker? I don't really know. And then obviously, those two parts over the same denominator, that cancels and leaves you with 3, and then the other part would be whatever that says. 2x squared plus 15x plus 7 over the original x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. So the marks would be for this rearrangement, a mark, and for the final answer, showing what was required, a mark. Notice I left it in that form because it said, show can be written as the expanded form. But you're going to get the mark, according to the marking scheme, if you put it back into that form. So that was the first part. Either the setting out as a piece of algebraic manipulation. If you did the division, then you'd have put this at the side, dividing that into that, you'd have had, well, I'll put it here, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 into 3x cubed plus 8x squared. Remember, there's no x, so I've got 0 column in plus no x minus 11. And then as before, take the biggest with the biggest. How many of them to make them? That would be 3. Put it in the appropriate column. Multiply it out just to see what you've got. 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 15x minus 18. Subtract it to find the remainder. Do any columns in any order you like. Negative 11 plus 18 is plus 7. Plus 15 is 15x. And 8 take away 6 is 2x squared. And then that gives you takes you back to this. It goes in three times with 
This left over still to be divided by the original. So that would have been the second mark if you set it out as a division. And then to the second part for four marks, making seven altogether for this. Hence express this in parcel fractions. Well, this is equal to that. Now that's a whole number part, so it's this portion that's going to be expressed in partial fractions. I should start again by saying this then. Let Oh dear, it takes so long just to copy it all down, doesn't it? Let that be represented by now luckily they're all distinct linear factors in the denominator, so it'll just be A over X plus one plus B over x plus 3, it's just a linear term underneath, just need a constant on top, plus c over x minus 2. Then, multiplying it throughout by that denominator to remove the fractions, so that for this part, multiplying it would knock out that one and leave you with those two. So, a times x plus 3 times x minus 2, plus b times, knocking out that one, x plus 1 times x minus 2, plus c times, knocking out this factor, leaving the other two, x plus three. And of course, all of that gets knocked out, leaving just two x squared plus 15x plus seven, just rewriting it the opposite way around so that your unknowns are on the left. Now, there's two techniques for this. You can equate corresponding coefficients, which in this case, because there are distinct linear fact uh, factors, so they can be knocked out, wouldn't be very efficient because you just end up with lots of simultaneous equations. Or there's put in selected appropriate values of x, knockout values, to remove two of them so there's only one left. That technique of equating corresponding coefficients is much more efficient when it comes to the more complicated ones where you've got repeated factors in the denominator or when you've got an irreducible quadratic, then they would avoid simultaneous equations in those cases. But here, it's simply a case of saying, right, let's just take them in alphabetical order. If I want A, I don't want B and C mentioned, so that means I'll be knocking out the X plus one. So let X equal negative one, so the term comes to zero. That means A is going to be putting negative one in. So negative one there means you've got a two, negative one there means you've got negative three, lots of A. It's two times, unfortunately, whoops negative 1 squared plus 15 times negative 1 plus 7. So that means negative 6a is equal to 2 and 7 is 9, minus 15 is negative 6, so a is equal to 1. And of course the marks, there was four marks for this. The first mark was for expressing it as separate fractions the appropriate way, with just constants in the numerator. The second mark was for multiplying it out, so there are three parts to find, but only two marks left. So the way they've done it is, because you've not got enough marks to dish about, there's one mark for getting two of the constants, and then the third one for getting the final one and putting it all back together. So that's A done. Right, B next. So I don't want these two, so the X plus threes can go. So if you let X equals negative three, they'll come to zeros, knocking them out, and you'll be left with. Now if it's negative three, that'll be a negative two. That'll be a negative 5. And the other side, unfortunately, will be 2 times negative 3 squared plus 15 times negative 3 plus 7. So that's going to be a nice 10b. So hopefully we've got a multiple of 10 over here. We've got 18, 25, but take away 45 is minus 20. So that b is a nice negative 2. So that would be a mark for getting two of them. Now, to find c, I want those two to disappear, so that's the x minus 2. Let x equal 2, and then they'll go turn to 0, and I'll be left with 3 times 5. c equals 2 times 2 squared plus 15 times 2 plus 7, so it's all positive this time. So you've got 15c, whoops, is equal to 4, 8, 15, 45, which means C is equal to 3. Not a mark yet. And then you put it all together. So what did the whole thing come to? It was 3, and that was a B plus, don't know what happened to that. 3 plus, and then this. 
So that would be 1 over x plus 1, minus 2, but rather than put plus minus, minus 2 over x plus 3, plus 3 over x minus 2. And that's the fourth mark.